All right, good. Full charge on the GoPro. We got a video to make. So, we're doing some upgrades to, you can kind of see this red car here. It's actually the SRT4. Um, we're doing some more stuff to it. Um, we did get some axles ordered in. Um, I've seen some of the ones just to go over real quick where it'd be like the DCR ones. I know DDS makes some. I've seen some of the, the I think the stage three and the stage five axles from them. Like I said, I've seen the ones that come from DCR. I've never ran anything and broke anything. Um, and well, it just was never a problem yet for me. But with this car, um, we're planning to be somewhere in the 700 horsepower range. So we ended up ordering a set of these. All right. So one's already unboxed. All right. Um, here's the other one. There's the part number that's on it. All right. So I'm going to pull the ones out of here. We're going to do a side by side uh, look at them um, and, well, get them installed. So I'll kind of show you what I do. So over here on the passenger side, Normally what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll unbolt my caliber, set my shoes off to the side, um, get your center bolt out, and then I'll like hang this up. Um, what I'll do is I'll turn the wheel so that it pushes the tie rod out, which would be turning this wheel that way, which will give the knuckle more room to be, to be able to pull it out this way. I'm going to unbolt my two bolts that go through here that hold the coil to this. I can slide that out. I can get up in behind there, tab that back side of that axle with the hammer pop that one out and when i do i'll uh, do the side by side comparison next to the one that we're installing so you can see what it looks like all right i just want to add these are usually always 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 32 mil these will be 21s okay one on each side and if you come over here most of the time these are 12s um if it's had an aftermarket caliber or something and somebody reused use the new bolts uh sometimes they're like a 13 or a 14 i've seen various sizes like that just figured i'd add that all right so we have them side by side but this one here uh leaked a lot of grease out so i took some time to clean that up uh, let's just double check out of curiosity um open this up see, if we can see what we're looking at here Like, yeah, they give you a decent size uh, sticker. Nice round one. All right, so this is pretty much it. Driver and passenger. Now, <clears throat> side by side. I'm honestly going to say I don't really see too much difference. Um... I can tell you, they're nice and tight. I mean, without pulling these off to know what it looks like inside or knowing what stuff is heat treated or how it's heat treated, um, it looks like the way when they're made like this and they have the three large, um, that means that it, it looks like a triangle in here and there's three large bearings like this that move in and out and that's where it actually has your impact. Um, just do this real quick here. Not to get too much grease. Okay, so um, if you're holding on to this and you want to see if there's play between this point and this point, you can wiggle this back and forth. I feel a little bit of there. And then you can do the same up here. And you want to go like hold them even. You're not worried about this. You're worried about turning. So that one has a little bit of play. These, nice and tight, okay? So um, what I'm going to do is I'll coat the inside of this here with anti-seize. I fill them up, get some on the on the splines, and I also cover these splines and out through here into the threads when I do these installs for these axles. But like I said, I got everything is pretty much cleaned up. Um, I believe we are going to be looking into doing something with these brakes here really soon because they were just usable the last time, but they look like they're down now. So we'll be getting new ones there. Um, I'm going to get this one installed and then we'll get to the passenger side and we'll do a side by side. Like I said, 
I really don't see too much visual difference from what you can see here, other than it's a new axle. All right, so very similar to the other side. We pulled our center bolt. We pulled the two bolts out of the coilover to knuckle, and we pulled our caliber off. We have it to the side. We did get it pulled out. This is just going to pry out with an uh, a little pry bar. We'll pop it out. Um, it's pretty easy to see <clears throat> what we have here. Get this out of the bag. Now this one here is actually round on this side, which is a little different. Um, here's our splines that go into the transmission. Our splines that will go into our axle. <clears throat> this one here, I'll probably like, I usually, if, if I have a uh, transmission fluid, I'll put a little bit on or I'll just put some grease uh, for the seal. Um, sometimes I've even sprayed like WD-40 on them before I've slid them in just to help uh, get it through the seal so you don't damage your seal. But side by side, we can kind of take a look at it in the front, in the back. You take a look, this one is an aftermarket one here already, I believe. Now this one, aftermarket or OEM, and then you can see the difference. But my plan is I'm going to pop this thing out because I know I'll lose some fluid. Um, and I'm going to get something clean. So if it's a substantial amount, I can just reuse it and throw it right back into the trans. All right. We have the axle is installed. I'm going to grab some cotter keys. That way these things get locked in place and we don't have to worry about anything getting backed out. Um, I do have some better brake pads that we're going to be throwing on here. Um... They are going to be keeping these size stock brakes, so <clears throat> till this thing's ready to see, I think, track time and stuff. Um, I don't think he's worrying about putting new brakes on right now. Um, I suggest it because with big turbo cars, you, you, with big turbo cars, you really need good braking. I like going to the Willwoods, but I think he's running maybe a 15 or a 16 inch slick. Um, I'm not sure what size wheels he did get, but, um, that's what he wants to go with. I think you have to run something bigger with the, I think you have to run a 16 inch with the Willwoods, but you can run a 15 inch with the stocks, I think. So with that, the brakes are gonna be what they are. It's getting nice pads put back on. These rotors actually look pretty good. That's gonna finish that up. We have to, um, I figure I'll just do this here. I think I might've did an unboxing on this. But um, we have a JMF intake to put on. We've got some four bar map and tip sensors. I did also pick up the clutch push rod here. Um, this has the stock one on it. So we're gonna work on getting that installed now. All right, so we got the stock one out. Um, this is pretty much what I've used. Um, some of these, I, I, it was uh, in line of progression here to try to test this stuff i ended up not using these usually uh i use these and I'll, I'll get the clip on that comes with it but um what you have to do is you have to pull this this is what actually breaks and then this starts wearing out here okay and instead of it coming straight back it comes off the side and kind of like lays in there so then you're pushing this rod in on an angle and it wears the master out okay so this runs into a plastic um like actually the piston in there okay and then this snap ring holds this in place okay just like that so it doesn't come out and this goes on here and that's pretty much how it is and it is adjustable on their length of, of push <clears throat> right there okay so eight mil for that um, I got these uh, picks the 90 and this okay so i had to separate this i kind of just i used this so i went up in there and pinched behind it so that i could get it spread because i just couldn't get any of these screwdrivers or this to pop this one was actually giving me a hard time so now that that's out of there and like i said this wears out 
clips break, it doesn't like to stay on there. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the one inside. All right. So I had to clean the floor up a little bit. And being that there's no sill plate here, um, I use this paper. Uh, I use this old sweatshirt that's a rag. Um, so I laid that across so I had something to lay on. Now, look up in here. You can see where the new one is. I adjusted the length out. All right, so we don't have no play. Um, I will have to start this and see how the clutch feels. And I might have to do some further adjusting to that. But that's what it looks like installed. I know we're kind of sideways. Okay. So there we go. That's what it looks like installed when you're looking at it normally. All right. Um, I might have to adjust it again. But I'll know that more when I get this thing sitting on the ground. All right. So we did get a couple things knocked out. On this car here today we did get the axles installed hopefully that's nothing that's going to be a problem we did install brake pads and we got our clutch push rod installed so with that being said this one i'm going to end but the next one we have the jmf box intake to get installed um our four bar sensors i have the adapter to install in the end of the regulator for our fuel pressure sensor so you can see what our fuel pressure is. Um, I have an upgraded piece coming for this. It should be here tomorrow, hopefully. And we're down to pulling that off. I will have to worry about how I'm gonna modify this lower pipe down here and some of these vacuum hoses. I'm gonna to have to redo a bunch of this stuff. I might even end up having to relocate this down here into the fender well also. Um, it's just all the things that that adds, maybe even I might even have to change some of this, the way this fuel line runs off of this regulator once I start fitting everything up with this intake right here. So I do know, what is it? I gotta grind this down here. And then there's something else. I know, I'll remember when I get to it. But that's for the next video. And we'll see you on this one.